Okay, I'm just home from work. It's like 4.30. Today started out normal. A normal Monday at work. Go through my basket, look at my stuff. My mom calls me. I live in a town of like 4,500 people. Small town, downtown, two blocks long. You know, I've showed videos of it, small town. Um, my mom calls me at work about 11.30, 11.45, and she says, have you guys heard? Heard what? There's a bomb threat at the grocery store, which is like across the street from our house. I mean, you look at our house, you look a little ways to the right, there's the grocery store. I'm like, excuse me? And um, so then from that point on, we got calls at work like every two minutes. Uh, why? Because the road I live on is like the main road through town. I live just outside of city limits. And the grocery store across the street is like the main grocery store in town. Um, we heard like two stories. One was uh, someone got fired and they threatened it with a bomb. Then we heard that it had been robbed and people were, there were hostages inside. Um, and then because like FBI was over there, the SWAT team was over there, the bomb squad was over there, police and fire departments were over there, the news people were set up in our front yard because they asked if they could park in our front yard. You couldn't get any closer than that. Um, uh, it. My mom saw the little robot bomb thing going up to the store. Um, and it was crazy apparently, craziness. Um, but this is what had happened. A call came in at 10.30 to the store. And the caller said, there is a bomb in your store in aisle three. And I will blow it up if you don't send me, you know. First he said he wanted them to barricade the, um, the store and send all the customers out and just keep the employees in. At that point, I would have quit my job and said, I'm just shopping, I'm leaving now. Um, so they did, they sent all the customers out and they, the, the guy on the phone told them not to call the police, but one of the customers that had been told to leave called the police and then it kind of went whoosh. Um, the guy kept them on the phone for two hours threatening them uh, that if they don't send money out from Western Union to, you know, a certain place, you know, he would blow up the place and, um, you know, that he could, you know, s he knows if the uh, workers left and whatever. But 12.30, he kept these guys on the phone for two hours. 12.30, the connection's broken and he's not on the phone anymore. And my mom calls me at work and says, they must have just, because at this time we didn't know it was just somebody on the phone. We thought there was somebody in the building holding these people hostage. We had no idea what was going on. At about 12.30, my mom says a whole bunch of people came running out with their hands above their heads, just running to the police officers. And um, so it looked like just a bunch of hostages had been released. And um, so they're over there now. The police are still there and it's like 4.30. They're still there. They're sweeping the building. The A&E cut the power to the building. Um, so I'm hoping all their stuff doesn't spoil. That'd be a bummer. Uh, and as of just a few minutes ago, the, the roads are still blocked here. When I came home, I had to like go around and because uh, I had to take a few blocks around and even then I had to go around a barricade uh, and up and around another barricade to get to my house. Because I'm right between two blocks that's all barricaded off. So yeah, it was quite the exciting day. I think I talked to everybody who works at the paper who isn't at work called in saying what's going on what's going on we heard um it, it was quite interesting so that was the big exciting news today in buchanan michigan if you go online to um i think it's wsbt.com you allowed to even say that on here i know you're not allowed to type it but whatever and look at the news story it'll say bomb threat buchanan yeah but they found out later, okay, after the connection was broke, they traced the call, they got a trace on the call to a cell phone in New York, which was routed from overseas. What I want to know is, who chooses a small little grocery store in the middle of nowhere with very few people in it to do this to? 
Who, who, who does that? I guess one of these had happened not long ago in a small town in Utah. So it's just crazy. But I had to get on a rant about that for a moment because, you know, it's not something that happens here every day. And thanks everybody who is giving me their addresses for postcards. I think I have like five or six. I'm going to go get postcards tomorrow. I was planning on it today, but couldn't get to the place I wanted to get them at. So, tomorrow. That's about all I got. I think I'm going to watch Hairspray now. Maybe. Go have some dinner. Okay. Bye.